So, you've just won the lottery. One million pound has been deposited into your bank account within the week. What do you do? What's happening people? My name is Robbie and today I'm going to explain to you what exactly I think you should do if you were to win the lottery tomorrow. So in the UK we have what's known as the millionaire maker and whenever you buy a ticket, not only do you enter to win the jackpot of 10 million pounds, 20 million pounds, euro millions, 100 million pounds, you also get an entry into the millionaire maker with every ticket. If you win this, you win a million pounds. Simple. Now I had a look online and according to Euro Millions, the chances of you winning the Millionaire Maker is around 1 in 1.9 million. This means you're 18,000 times as likely to be in a car accident than you are to win the million pound. The odds don't seem so great. And also take that as a reminder to always wear your seatbelt, don't text and drive, don't drink and drive, because you're 18,000 times as likely to be in a car accident than you are to win the Millionaire Maker. So as unlikely as it is, I'm sure we've all found ourselves talking with friends and the inevitable conversation comes up at some point, what would you do if you won a million pounds? Everyone wants a Ferrari, a Rolex, a mansion, a round the world trip. Then there's that one boring guy who tells you, oh I would invest this much here and I would invest that much there and I would put this much in a savings account. That's me. I'm that boring guy. So in this video I'm going to tell you exactly how I would spend or invest £1 million if I won it tomorrow and how I would use that to create various streams of income and pretty much prepare for early retirement. Step 1, before I even get into what I would spend the money on, let's address the very first action that you take if you win the lottery and that's keep your mouth shut, zip it. Don't chuck a text in the group chat letting your mates know you're now a millionaire. Don't post a photo on Instagram of your winning lottery ticket. Tell your husband, your wife, your partner. Don't really tell anyone else. The reason that I say this is there are various stories of people winning the lottery and being inundated by people looking for money. All of a sudden, your old mates that you haven't seen for 15 years are looking to go grab a drink or grab a coffee. Catch up. Would they have been in touch if you hadn't won the million pounds? I doubt it. So keep it to yourself. Don't tell anyone. You don't want that unnecessary attention. If you invest your money correctly and don't tell anyone, as opposed to buying a Ferrari, no one would even notice the difference to your life other than you and your close circle of friends and family. And the immediate difference to your life would be so marginal that you could pass it off as good investment, made some money in Bitcoin or something to that effect. You could get away with it without letting everyone know you've won a million pound cash. So let's take it from the top. Let's start with a million pound. Investment number one, and this is the main investment here, property. So I've mentioned many times before that property is my thing, it's what I'm interested in, it's what I'm looking to invest more money into in the coming years, and it's how I plan to grow my overall wealth over the next 20 to 30 years. Of course, property has many different facets. You'll receive different returns from different locations, different sizes of properties, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, commercial properties, Airbnbs. So these numbers are gonna be very rough and quite vague for that reason. So of the one million pound, I would invest 600,000 of that in property. And the trick here is to not buy cash. So I know what you're thinking, you've just won a million pounds, why would you take a mortgage out? Why would you borrow money from the bank if you have a million pounds sitting there? I hate to break it to you, but one million pound when it comes to property, it's not that much money. This flat that I'm in just now is probably worth 125, maybe 130,000. So you could get less than 10 of these for one million pound cash. Whereas if you borrow money from the bank in the form of a mortgage, you're levering that cash, your money goes way further. So as I mentioned before, these are very broad figures, but I would invest 400,000 pounds into bog standard buy to let properties with 25% deposits. So immediately I've just earned 400,000 pounds cash into a 1.6 million pound portfolio. I've used the 400,000 for 25% deposits, so obviously you would just times that by four to get the full value of the portfolio. So with that 400,000 pound, I would buy 16 buy to let properties at 100,000 pounds each. You could actually make your money go a lot further if you were buying properties that needed renovation work. You could buy a property for 50,000, do 15,000 pounds worth of renovation and it could be worth 90,000 for example. As I mentioned before, there are many there are many facets to property. There are many ways to make money in it, but this is one of the most simple options and I'm going to try and keep this video somewhat simple. I'm also not going to overcomplicate the video by including legal fees, arrangement fees for mortgages, stamp duty, tax, all of the various costs of buying properties and letting properties out. Just for the sake of this video, obviously if I was to actually win one million pound, I would factor into account legal fees, council tax, stamp duty, and all the various other costs. But I would also probably go down the renovation route as well, but that's too complicated to condense into one video. So with the 16 properties, we could conservatively estimate that we could make £200 profit per month from each property. If this is after mortgage payments, 
management fees and insurance. So this would provide a £3,200 per month income. What we can also take into account here is that UK property averages around 4% increase in value per year. So not only is this producing £3,200 per month in income, statistically each property would increase by around £4,000 in the first year. And I've just bought 16 of them. So that's £64,000 in capital appreciation as well as the rental income. Let's say you keep all 16 properties and pay the mortgage down over 25 years. And they continue increasing by 4% on average every year. After 25 years, your £1.6 million portfolio is now worth £4.2 million. Yes, the properties will need some maintenance, a new kitchen here, a new bathroom there. Over 25 years, you will have to do this. But in the grand scheme of things, you've still made £4.2 million. So you could literally spend 265000 just on renovations and upkeep and you'd still be at £4 million. Over that 25 years, you've also made £960,000 in rental income. And now all your properties are paid off. Now you can sell them, remortgage them and pull some money out, or just continue to rent them out mortgage free. Without the overhead of your mortgage, your income is just skyrocketed again. But I am getting sidetracked now, so let's bring it back to the original 3,200 pounds per month income produced by these properties. Next up, I'd either use the remaining 200,000 pounds set aside for property on either commercial property or more complicated property strategies such as serviced accommodation like Airbnbs or student accommodation. As I'm not very clued up on commercial property and what you can get for your money, I'm gonna go down the route of spending the remaining 200,000 pounds on some more residential property. So I would spend the remaining 200,000 pounds on four city centre apartments, again at 25% deposits each. These four properties would be serviced accommodation on a website like Airbnb, and they would be aimed at tourists or maybe professionals who are on work trips for a week here, a month there. I actually have a friend who has an apartment in central Edinburgh. He lists it on Airbnb. It's worth around 200,000 pounds at the minute, I believe. And he profits around 25,000 pounds per year from this property. So for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna use these numbers because I know they're real. With 200,000 pounds, I could buy four of these properties, bringing in 8,333 pounds per month between the four of them. And I know what you're thinking, if you can get that sort of return through Airbnb, why would you bother spending the other 400,000 on regular buy-to-lets? Having serviced accommodation properties is a completely different ball game to having regular residential properties. There's a much higher upkeep, the place has to be completely cleaned and tidied and ready for the next guest. The complications of bookings, cancellations, you're essentially running a hotel. If I won one million pounds, my aim would be to make the money work for me, not create a whole new job for myself. So with those four properties bringing many headaches, I would employ a management company to deal with those headaches and then take the profit left for myself. So now we have a very sturdy property portfolio with 600,000 pounds in equity. With the remaining 400,000, I would keep it very simple. I would invest 300,000 pounds in an index fund like the S&P 500. This index fund returns approximately 8% per year, meaning the portfolio would grow 24,000 pounds in the first year, and this would increase over time due to compound interest. We now have 100,000 pounds left. I've been safe and I've been frugal with the first 900,000 pounds. There is only one place this remaining 100,000 pounds is going, and that's straight into crypto. Now, don't come at me with all this Dogecoin, Shiba, SafeMoon rubbish. It would be 75,000 pounds into Bitcoin and 25,000 pounds into Ethereum. Crypto is, of course, a very speculative investment. It's borderline gambling. That £100,000 could turn into £25,000 very quickly and very easily. But it could also turn into a million pound very quickly and very easily. There's no way to predict this and it's too volatile to go off previous years to work out an average. But if I won £1 million, there's not a chance that I wouldn't take a punt on crypto. So as easy as that, £1 million, gone. Out of my bank account, I can't touch it. And I know what you're thinking here. There's no way he wins a million pound and he doesn't buy a new flash car, a new watch, a new house. And you'd be kind of right, but kind of wrong. With that one million pound, I've created an income of 138,000 pounds per year, not including any potential profits from the cryptocurrencies and not including increases in the index funds. That's just cash income from the properties. I would probably continue working at my current job to continue paying my mortgage and all my bills. With the combined income of my current job, and the income from all those properties, I would absolutely buy a new house. I would also buy a new car, but I would still be buying a house with a mortgage and I would probably still finance a car as well. And I'd be letting those assets pay for all of this. So the one million pound is funding the new house and the new car, but not directly. It's been invested and those assets are then paying for the fun stuff. So the million pound is spent. 
it's gone and currently I'm 27 years old. So now how would the money stack up and how would I be looking by the time I retire at 60 for example? The property portfolio including Airbnbs was worth 2.4 million pounds when purchasing all those properties. Using that 4% average over 33 years, that portfolio would be worth £8,756,114 with all the mortgages paid off. And using the 8% average over 33 years for the index fund holdings, that £300,000 would now be worth £3.8 million. So without even considering the crypto, which could be worth zero or £10 million, we're already sitting at over £10 million. But wait, it gets even better. I've been renting out the 16 buy to let properties for 33 years. Let's be a little more realistic and assume rent has increased by 1% per year for those 33 years, which is a very conservative average of rent increases over those years. For the first 25 years, taking mortgage costs into account, I've earned just over £1 million in rental income. Then the mortgages are paid off, so the rent on those 16 properties has just increased by around £250 per month each. That's another 48 grand in rent per year. So after renting these properties for 33 years, we've made £1,786,021. Let's also assume we've rented out the four Airbnb properties and we've made £25,000 profit per year per property for the past 33 years. That's £3.3 million made without any increases in the, the nightly rate of each property. So taking all of these factors into account, we've turned that initial £1 million 33 years ago into 20 million five hundred sixty three thousand six hundred and fifty four pounds and eighty pence so i'm just editing this video just now and i've realized that i made a calculation error somewhere i don't know where the error came from but the number is significantly different the number is actually 17 million six hundred and forty four thousand nine hundred and forty nine pounds which is still not to be sniffed at but i did get it wrong so here i am fixing my mistake. Not to mention that there's every chance that if I was making that much money from the property, I would be reinvesting and buying more properties over time. By the time I retired, I would probably be sitting on somewhere around 100 properties, maybe more, maybe less. That's a complete guess. So if I haven't bored you to tears yet and you're still actually here watching, thank you very much for persevering. Obviously these numbers are very hypothetical, it's just a fun game to play and I haven't taken into account all the nitty gritty numbers like legal fees, tax, stamp duty, all these things. All of these things would absolutely come into play. But this whole scenario is a hypothetical one. And for the record, I don't even play the lottery. So I'm literally never going to win this £1 million that I've just spent in my head and made all this money from. But if you're interested in business and investing, it's still a fun activity just to imagine how you would make that money work for you. So if you have enjoyed it, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let me know in the comments what would you do if you won £1 million tomorrow. Now next week, I'm going to break down how I would spend the £1 million in a slightly more fun way. And I can promise you, it will be considerably less financially smart, but there will be considerably more fun purchases. So thanks again if you made it this far. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next week.